So we are rolling. All right, fantastic. Welcome back. You're still hanging up with us right here. This is why in the morning. And uh, this is the last segment of the day. And we're just about to get into an interactive, up close, and personal interview with a very powerful gentleman or a very powerful guest who is live with us in the studio. But before we get there, let's do each other a favor. You can jump onto that hashtag or you can plug in on, on that hashtag, which is hashtag why in the morning on all our socials. And that includes Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter at Y254 channel. Instagram is Y254 underscore channel. Personally, you can find me at Brian Sako 101. Now, back to a guest in studio. He's a veteran, celebrated, syndicated radio and TV presenter. But he'll, he'll, he'll tell us if he's getting into TV, <laughs> yeah, for that matter. He's, he's work ethic, and some of his achievements are ones to envy. What he has managed to achieve for himself as a person who has been in media for this uh, amazing period that he's been till right now is actually something that you love to learn from and be a part of. But before we get too far, the one and only Mr. Billy Mia, radio personality live with us in studio. Good morning, Billy. Morning to you, Brian. How are you doing? I'm so excited and scared. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm scared. Do I, do I look scary? <laughs> no, you don't look scary, but uh, bro, you know, there's people you meet and yeah. you're like, Jesus. Is he, is he the one? <laughs> is he the one, you know? I was speaking to a friend and I'll uh, remember Alienda Court and a certain event where they met this celebrity and they're like, ah, come this person is real. I thought they were an angel. <laughs> so yeah. that, that kind of moment. But yeah. uh, uh, so amazing to have you in the studio. Thank you so much, bro. You know, uh, for, for a lot of people maybe who don't know you or maybe uh, they're trying to watch why in the morning for the first time, if you are to introduce yourself to them, how would you describe yourself? Uh, I'll just say that my name is Billy Mia. Okay. Uh, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a radio personality, I'm a media owner, I'm a fashion house owner, you know. I'll just say I'm all that plus a, puff, a packet of chips, you know. Uh -huh. uh, I do radio, the drive show. I work at uh, Radio 47. It's a newly launched uh, radio station. And uh, it's the first Swahili audiovisual FM station. It's right. called Radio 47. I did the drive show, share, uh, drive show there with right. my brother Baruk Molim. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, who's also a former colleague? <laughs> Even he's still my colleague. All right. Yeah. Amazing. Now, take us through your journey just a little bit. When did you start media? Did you always know that you know, you'll end up being on radio or yeah. doing anything media related? And yeah. Then, uh, which year was it? And, and when you were starting, what are some of the things that were happening in your environment that nurtured you to us this kind of profession till right now? Uh, when I was young, I used to take my father's cassette. You know those cassettes that used to roll with a with the pen? Yeah. Uh, like you want to rewind them, you rewind with the pen. You want to forward, you forward with the pen. So yeah. I used to dub them, uh, in fact, Metro FM. That was uh, KBC. KBCs. Yeah, so I used to dub those cassettes, uh, listen to the music, dub the music, listen to blues. I used to have these books for writing the lyrics of songs, you know. So I used yeah. to be beaten so much by my dad for doing that. But yeah. uh, I realized it was like prepping me to be a media person. And when I used to listen to the presenters, I used to say that, ah, this guy could have said this instead of what he has said, you know. So it was something in me, and I really wanted it, but I didn't know what I want. Right. I was just like, I loved music, I loved listening to radio, I loved uh, listening to people. So when uh, I finished my Form 4 at Our Lady of Mercy, Ringa, in uh, right. Kojuach, right. uh, time came for me to go to college. Now, I applied uh, Mombasa Polytechnic that time. I applied right. for a diploma in mass communication. So the letter came, but it came to KBC here, because my dad right. used to work here, by the way. Oh, he wow. was an engineer uh, in KBC. So when the letter, the calling letter came, apparently someone here hid it. You know? <laughs> Jesus. So someone hid it, and we are there waiting for the letter. You know, because I had all the qualifications. I applied. You know, so we just waited. 
Six months down the line, I decided to go to Mombasa and ask them, what's the issue? I applied. In fact, they called me, like, why didn't you report? What's the issue? Is it school fees or what? I told them, yeah. I'm waiting for the calling letter. They right. told me, but we sent it. But unfortunately, the chances are over. So right. if you want, you can apply for a certificate course, then graduate to diploma. Right. So because I'd stayed home for long, and you know, like your, your colleagues have uh, gone uh, ahead of you. So right. I decided to apply for the certificate course. I went to poly. I did my certificate course. I finished. Now, after doing my certificate, I applied for attachment at uh, KBC Mombasa, Kwani yeah. FM. Yeah. Uh, I did my attachment there. So it's usually three months. Right. So after doing the three months, they decided to add another three months, you know, uh -huh. because of what I was doing, because I had the passion. And I said, this is the only way I'm going to make it in this industry. Right. So, and I used to tell myself, when I get attached, because it was so hard to get attachment or yeah. internship. So when I got it, I said, now this is it. I'm not letting go. So right. I did the first three months. I was yeah. just going all my way. Yeah. I went to uh, the second three, three months. They yeah. added another three months. So I did nine months there. Right. Now, after finishing the nine months, uh, a certain boss came and uh, she told me, Nyaje Billy, I want to give you employment because you are so good, we can't let you go. Right. Her name is uh, Aisha Sagaf. I think uh -huh. she works here still. Okay. She could be still here. Yeah, okay. Aisha Binti Sagaf. All so right. I went for an interview. I passed and I got a show there. I started okay. doing the drive show. Right. And initially, when I was doing attachment, uh, I used to do news. Right. I go out there, source for news, come back, translate, record, and play. You right. know, so uh, there was an hour during the day between uh, one p.m. and two p.m. that was blank. Okay. So I used to like uh, do mixes of music. I just uh, mix music with cool edit and let them play. Right. There's this guy called Ben Bayer. May God rest his soul in peace. He told me, yeah. now why should you like mix the music? You can just go to studio and play them live from there. Right. I did that. After a week, he told me, now you can just stay the time. Right. Hey, just say the time. When the song is over, just say the time and play. Right. So when I did that, now is then I started building myself, going on air, you know. Your confidence. Yeah, the confidence also. also. I started getting my confidence then. You bet. The rest is history. Right. I got to work there. I did the, the drive show. Okay. Now, when I was doing the drive show, there's a guy there that uh, didn't feel good about it. Ah. Because. Jealousy. Jealousy. Vita. Jealousy. Because politics. he ah. was an old boy there. Okay. Uh, the person that was doing the drive show had gotten work somewhere else in Nairobi. So this boss told me, Billy, I want you to do this show. So when I started doing this show, he was like, no, this guy is not fit to do this show. Okay. You are too young for this. So he was, he was like going to uh, the internet, googling a good presenter, what they're supposed to do, and posting it on there, on the, bill, uh, on the notice board there for me to see and for people to see. And telling me, ah, Billy, Bunny, you're not doing the, uh, the correct thing. That is wrong. What you're doing is wrong, you know. It's not supposed to be like that. And doing all manner of things, you know. So it really put me down. It okay. really, really put me down. But I said, uh -huh. uh, that's life. Okay. That's how it's supposed to be. And he thought that he was uh, going to put you, me down. You can hold it right there. Uh, we, 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 we have to fix something just a little bit. But uh, you can continue to interact with us uh, live <coughs> on our social media. And that includes Facebook, uh, Instagram, and on Twitter as well. Is at Y254 underscore channel on Instagram. On Twitter is at Y254 channel. On Facebook is at Y254 channel. By the way, we have also a TikTok. <laughs> uh, so if you want to see who is the best uh, dancer, at Y, <laughs> at Y254 channel, you can, you can, you can find us there. But now, uh, as, 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 we, as, we, as we fix that, um, you, when you spoke you know, about your, your work progress from you know, getting, uh, getting your first, first radio gig and meeting all these forces that you know, are taking you uh, left, back and forth, it reminded me of also my first experience in radio. Mm -hmm. um, my first, 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 first day on radio, it was on a Swahili show. <laughs> you know, not being the cool kid that I was back then, you know, I, like you said, <laughs> like you said, you have the passion, so you want, you want it so bad it, you that know. you're ready to die for each and every sport that yeah. comes. So I uh, met one of the radio producers at our campus, lucky enough our campus still has a radio station, mm -hmm. and uh, Nakambu, hey, you want to take a radio? So I was like, yeah. 
I, I think this was in 2015, towards 2015, early uh, mm -hmm. beginning of 2015, transition from 2014. So on a mid-morning, pure Swahili with Mombasa music, <laughs> or let's, let's call it Swahili music. <laughs> so uh, so. co-hosting with a lady who is from Kosto, she knows all the lingo, the jargon in Swahili. And, and all I'm the just songs. They're like, oh my goodness, how am I going to blend it? Okay. But you know, like you mentioned, uh, you live, you learn. You know, there's so many mistakes you make along the way, but like you mentioned, if you have the passion for it, the confidence to do it, you will always learn. So I eventually ended up learning how to do uh, a Swahili show yeah. on radio. And then, lucky enough again, I got a TV show. Uh, not, not, not like a talk show, though, but now on a news segment, where I was uh, also like now a news reporter, but now for TV, doing uh, reporting in Swahili. And that just built me. And now when I look at myself from like the first day I began and up to now, I, I, I can say I'm really proud of myself. And uh, I can, yeah, I, I can totally relate to uh, your experience. But then also now when it comes to TV, TV is a little bit.